Thank you. So my name is Michael. Uh, everyone calls me Capsi, and I work for a company called Zozo Technologies. So firstly, I want to show you a movie. Now this was made with the same techniques used in Pixar's animated films. It was created using mathematics and Swift, and no hardware or graphics APIs were used. This is a rendering technique called ray tracing. Simply put, ray tracing throws a multitude of rays from a receptor point, our eyes, into a virtual scene. We observe how the rays of light behave when they hit different surfaces and display the resulting color on the screen. So, why ray trace in Swift? Well, it is try Swift, and I wanted to try programming something I've never done before in the language. I wanted to see what Swift would be like as a bare bones language rather than a medium for calling frameworks and system APIs. And I focused on building the ray tracer from nothing in order to really learn how it works. So in the short time that we have, I want to give you a taste of some fundamental ray tracing math and how it would be done in Swift. For instance, if we want to render one of the spheres in the movie, we need to know when our rays of light will intersect it. We're shooting out thousands of rays of light into our scene, and we need to know which ones will hit the sphere. So that requires coming up with an analytic solution to two equations, one for the point on a sphere and one for a parametric ray. If we take the dot product of a point on the surface of a sphere P, it will be equal to its radius squared or R squared. And a parametric ray is just an origin point O, a direction vector D, and a T parameter that tells us how far we travel along the ray. So we want to find T. For what T does our ray hit the surface of the sphere? If we substitute P in each equation, the dot product of O plus TD minus R squared, it should equal zero. And working through the vector algebra, we can arrange this into a quadratic. So what's a quadratic? A quadratic just follows the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And the thing is with a quadratic is it can have one, two, or no solutions. Now a solution is just any value of x where the quadratic equals zero. And we can find these solutions using the quadratic formula, which I won't get into here. Now, we can also look at a quadratic geometrically as a parabola shape. And any time the parabola crosses the x-axis, we have a root or a solution to the quadratic equation. So now we can clearly see how our quadratic can have one, two, or no solutions. In terms of array, we can also have one, two, or no intersections with our sphere. The ray can touch the surface of the sphere it can intersect right through it or not touch it at all. So now we can see how the math of a quadratic models what is happening here. So time for some Swift. Firstly, we obtain our quadratic constants, A, B, and C, from the origin and direction of the ray and the radius in the center of the sphere. We then use those to work out something called the discriminant. Now the discriminant is just a part of the quadratic formula that tells us how many solutions we have. If it's greater than zero, we have one or two intersections with our sphere, and we use the quadratic formula to find the t parameter for the ray. We then perform a distance check and use the ray equation to find the point of the intersection in a 3D space. So if we throw some rays into this code, how does it look? OK, so we can't exactly tell it as a sphere yet, but it is round. So that's encouraging. If we render the normals, we can confirm it as a sphere. And if we add something called Lambertian scattering, it starts to look pretty good. So I've only covered one of the many algorithms used in the movie. If you're interested in the others, please check out the GitHub. Finally, I don't want you to worry if you didn't understand the math here. If there's something I want everyone to take away, it's more that if you're a developer, your time spent really getting to know your domain, no matter what it may be, 
is extremely valuable. Always challenge yourself. Finally, if you'd like to come and talk more about ray tracing, please don't hesitate to visit me at the Zozo booth. Thank you.